It's November here in the Carolinas, and this morning I'm heading to the Charlotte Monroe Executive Airport, where the Warbirds over Monroe Air Show is taking place this weekend. The air show takes place each year, on or very close to the Veterans Day holiday. It's the brainchild of a local nonprofit organization called Warriors and Warbirds, and has been taking place since 2005. Today, it's one of the largest aviation events in the region, and takes not only the efforts of the people at Warriors and Warbirds, but also the city of Monroe, the local Veterans Council, local business, and many, many volunteers. The Air Show is an annual event and strives to honor and remember our military veterans. Walking through the main gate, I am immediately greeted by two iconic World War II era aircraft a Curtis P-40 and a North American P-51 Mustang. The Mustang is a D model. She's painted with a white and black wing and fuselage D-Day invasion stripes. That huge 11-foot diameter four-bladed propeller is bolted to a 1,500 horsepower Merlin engine which can easily pull this airplane along at 250 miles an hour in a nice, easy cruise flight. And much faster if you pour the coal through it. The business end of three of the airplane's 50 caliber M2 machine guns. Right next door is American Dream, a nicely restored Curtis TP-40. You'll notice this aircraft has a second seat for an instructor, hence the TP-40 designation. This airplane also has wing-mounted machine guns, and that yellow thing sticking out the wing in the background is a backup landing gear indicator. As I wander the flight line, I find a wide variety of aircraft. Here's a T-34 painted in U.S. Navy colors, made by Beechcraft. Over there is a Pilatus P-3, a Swiss military trainer. This chunky looking beast is a North American T-28 Trojan, an advanced Navy trainer. Another Pilatus P-3, now here's an airplane I've never seen except in a museum. The Bell P-63 King Cobra. Unusual because of its mid-fuselage engine. And also unusual because it was never used by the U.S. in combat. But the Soviets absolutely love this aircraft by more than 2,500 of them. Here's another T-28. Here's another aircraft I have never seen before, a Chinese Nanchang CJ-6. This thing is full of surprises. For example, this shutter cooling system and a propeller that turns opposite of nearly every other airplane in the world. Here's several North American AT-6 Texans. Moving over into the central display area, I found this sharply painted Vans Aircraft RV-14A with what looks like special stole wingtips. These are kit planes and you build them yourself. Here's Arrowwood Aviation's display with November 377 Mike Mike parked out front. 
Arrowwood is where I rent my aircraft from when I go flying nowadays. You see, I suddenly left the aviation business in 1998, leaving behind a 20-year career. I didn't touch an airplane for the next 14 years. Then in 2012, I made it a point to get current. I've been renting from Arrowwood ever since. The Civil Air Patrol has a presence here at the show, showing off their late model Cessna 182. Also present today are the people in aircraft from JARS. Using aircraft like this Helio Courier, which is perfect for serving short, unimproved airstrips, typical of the locations they serve. Here's another T-34 trainer, this one painted in U.S. Air Force colors. Next is the tent for the EAA, or the Experimental Aircraft Association. This is a Zenith aircraft, CH-750. Definitely a home-built aircraft, meant for short field operations. They also have a nice looking Luscom on display. Tucked in next to the hangars, I found a couple of World War II era military encampments. The first of which appears to be a German post. A bit further along, I find the HQ of a unit with the 82nd Airborne Division. The aerial demonstration of today's show is about to kick off, which makes this a perfect time to wrap up part one of my coverage of the Warbirds over Monroe Air Show. Watch for part two and remember, life is a journey. Enjoy the ride and thanks for watching.